Upheaval. Reckoning. Chapter 45. An Easy Feat. Fluttershy was among the first to head out when Princess Celestia told her and her friends that they were to rest. Now that the attack was over, she could go back to the hidden archives and finish that book. She had to. There had to be some kind of upside to the Eye of Fear. Maybe the terror it induced was just one function. Maybe she didn't have the Eye of Fear. It could be something else. So experiments were done long ago that produced something that resembled the stare. That didn't mean that there weren't other potential sources. She just needed to check the end of the book. It only took a couple of steps outside the audience hall to notice them. Ponies carrying away loaded stretchers. Bloody bandages everywhere, legs and slings, and the steady drone of moans mixing with orders being barked. Redbrand was shouting from a distance, making assignments and scolding subordinates. There will always be more injured. They will be there when you leave, and they will still be there when you return. Fluttershy's urgent trot slowed to a hesitant walk. As much as she hated to admit it, Blue Moon was right. The stream of injuries was never going to stop. Even if she used miles and miles of bandages and a sea of antiseptic, there was always going to be another pony with a broken limb, a nasty gash, or a gaping wound. If she failed to find a way to help her friends more, she'd never forgive herself. She cringed as another pair of stretcher-carrying pegasi flew past her. With each step she took within these halls, it was getting harder and harder not to drop everything and start helping out. Why should I even have to choose? She thought. It's not fair. Why should helping others be the wrong thing to do? More and more sights of the injured and the dead tugged at her heart until she couldn't take it anymore. Here, let me help. She trotted over to one of the medics, treating a badly cut legionnaire. Just for a while. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with a little first aid for a while. Four ponies injured later, that dread voice came from behind her. Fluttershy! What are you doing back here? Redbrand pushed past a couple of medics until he was standing over. Both Fluttershy and the patient she was taking care of blanched at his glare. Blue Moon's told me some things, you stubborn filly. You've got other things to take care of. So put those bandages down and get out of my staff's way. But, but... Try as she might, Fluttershy couldn't finish the sentence. She had her arguments rehearsed in her head when she started helping out, but her tongue refused to follow with Redbrand glowering over her. Drop the bandages, Redbrand growled. Defeated, Fluttershy let the roll drop. She was about to walk away when she felt a twinge of resentment. She glared at Redbrand. How can I just walk away from this? One hoof after the other, Redbrand replied. He picked up the fallen roll and placed it in one of his saddlebags. Easy for you to say. No, you arrogant filly, Redbrand said. It's not. He held her gaze sternly. Fluttershy remembered the eye of fear and tried to look away. But doing so would be a terrible insult to him. That isn't a medic here who doesn't wish he could make all the hurt go away. Don't think you're something special for wanting that. But we know our parts in this. We know what we can do. You don't, element of kindness. You're meant for more. So stop wasting your time. Stop! Fluttershy started to sob. Don't call me element of kindness! He didn't turn away when Fluttershy leaned on him. And what's this blubbering about this time? Redbrand asked. His voice softened. He didn't turn away when Fluttershy leaned on him, tears trickling down her cheeks. He looked over to some of the medics and glared them back to work. It's the eye of fear, Fluttershy said between sobs. She told the whole story. Private Pansy's true nature, the Grey Wing elite, the experiments. She garbled it all horribly with sobs, sniffs, and hiccups. By the time she reached the end of it, however, the doctor was pushing her away with his forelegs. Well, isn't that tragic, Redbrand said. Fluttershy looked up in shock. There was no grudging empathy under the old stallion's gruff tone. Not this time. Your stare induces terror within its victims, Fluttershy. Where did you expect it to have come from? Some land of chocolates and honey? The tears stopped flowing. Not out of any relief, but because surprise overwhelmed everything else. I don't feel sad for you at all, Wallflower. So you found out you've got bad parts in you too. That even bearing the element of kindness doesn't make you the king's gift to all living things. Too bad. You have to do what you can, with what you have, just like the rest of us lowly mortals. Fluttershy's ears flattened. How dare he? Here she was, trying to seek some comfort as he goes off, as if he had any idea what- Stand up straight, Redbrand said. And stop crying. So what if your evil eyeballing actually was evil? They're still your weepy tears, not that idiot volunteers. He gave her a shake before letting go. 
Stop fussing about where it came from, and start figuring out where you can take it. Fluttershy swallowed hard, as if a physical action could get the last bits of resentment to back down completely. You're right, she said. She straightened herself out, wiped away the last tears, and took a step forward. She smiled at Redbrand. Thank you. Again. Bah! Redbrand turned away and walked towards the paramedics. Fluttershy watched him for a while before galloping off. She ran past more injured, but they tugged at her heart less. There were plenty of ponies helping out. The Legion's medics were handling the attack well. Canterlot's doctors and nurses were also among them. They had this under control. She stopped only at the sight of Blue Moon by the main doors. Blue Moon remained a disconcerting sight. It wasn't just his very feminine appearance. She had seen the other thorns. Sable steel darting into the fray with blades and a stinger like a large metal wasp. Lioncourt, all grace and smiles even as he cut down his foes. Not even the wildest grin and pearliest teeth could hide the predatory nature of Lioncourt's smile, and it was plain enough to see that even approaching Sable Steel was dangerous. Blue Moon looked like a normal, approachable mare. There was something different about Blue Moon this time, though. The band of metal around his horn was gone. His two escorts didn't seem to mind, either. Your Hornlock, Fluttershy said. My escorts and I were walking around the palace when the attack happened, Blue Moon said. We were cornered, so I told them I could keep us alive if I could use my magic. One of the escorts scratched his head. Did more than keep us alive, he muttered. They say he killed a hundred Ursins at Sharpstone Bridge. I think they were understating. A lot. Fluttershy smiled. You've earned the Legion's trust. That's nice to hear. Trust would indeed be nice, Blue Moon replied. He lowered his voice. Or they could just be too afraid to put the horn lock back on without one of the royalty around. What about you, Fluttershy? What have you learned? Not much, Fluttershy replied. She repeated her story again, this time without the racking sobs. Blue Moon's eyes narrowed. Lock Horse. That, my sister has read before. Lock Horse, one of the leaders of the Wendigos. This is more serious than we anticipated. He circled Fluttershy slowly. Why would the element of kindness choose a bearer with so much potential for torment? I... I don't know. Fluttershy's throat tightened. Even hearing that she had that potential hurt. She forced her smile to stay. But I'm sure I'll find out more once I get back to the Hidden Archives. No, Blue Moon said. You've found the link between your stare and the Windigos. You need a way to harness it, not more history. I doubt Lexarius and his ponies took the time to discover that. What can I do, then? Fluttershy asked. Reading about the horrible origins of her stare was bad enough, yet Blue Moon looked like he was about to suggest even worse things. Blue Moon's horn took on a pale glow. At once, his two escorts looked ready to jump him. Stand down, Blue Moon said. I could have killed all of you the moment you took off my horn lock. I could have disappeared and wreaked havoc in Canterlot, if that's what I was here for. If you stop jumping at my every spell, I'll be able to help the Elements of Harmony. Blue Moon's escorts looked at each other briefly, before one of them spoke to him. We're supposed to be guarding you, Blue Moon. We haven't insisted on putting your horn lock on, but throw us a bone here. Explain before casting any spells. I know that Unicorn Guard Captain Shining Armor and Captain Vanguard Clash discovered the location of a trapped alicorn in Mount Unicornia, Blue Moon said. I also know that this trapped alicorn once served Oceanus, and the royalty managed to converse with it. Fluttershy and I are about to do the same. How did you... Even we didn't know all that. A hornlock and escorts would not have stopped my sister from discovering everything possible in Canterlot, Blue Moon replied. As legionnaire almost, I am able to do this much. Several thin beams of blue light burst from his horn. They stopped in midair, leaving points of light where they stopped. It looked like Blue Moon was projecting the image of some kind of constellation. After a moment, the points began to expand into a network of lines, forming an outline that quickly resembled something familiar. Cantalot, Fluttershy whispered. She glanced at Blue Moon. Amazing. The other legionnaires stared wide-eyed. In a few seconds, Blue Moon's horn was projecting a very detailed, small-scale picture of the entire city of Canterlot and Mount Unicornia, right down to individual doors and windows. Blue Moon pointed towards a large sphere of light within the mountain. That would be where we are going, he said. One of the escort's eyes narrowed as he looked at the image closely. Those points of light, he said. Those were places you asked to visit. 
Referential points, Blue Moon said. I'll explain in detail for you later, if you want. However, we have a limited amount of time to help the element of kindness before she heads for the Old Kingdom. Now, will you allow me to teleport her to that place? The other escorts looked to the one who spoke earlier. We'd be cut up corpses by now if it weren't for you, Blue Moon. I don't trust you completely, but I'll stick my neck out for you just to return the favor, especially if it means helping out the elements of harmony. The other escorts nodded. Thank you, Blue Moon said. His horn glowed again and the magical projection disappeared. Initiating teleportation circle. A circle of magical light formed beneath their hooves. Fluttershy nearly flew away at the sight of it, but Blue Moon placed a hoof on her shoulder. Steady. I'm just moving us as close as possible. There's a dimensional lock around the place itself, so we'll have to walk the rest of the way. Fluttershy was about to say something in return, but the bright flash of light left her stunned and silent. When her vision cleared, she was inside a cave. Glowing crystals lined the walls. The ground beneath her hooves felt uneven and coarse. She turned towards Blue Moon to ask him something, but a sharp pain in her chest brought her up short. Fluttershy, Blue Moon said. He walked over to her, his stoic expression finally showing some worry. I'm okay, Fluttershy said. Her legs shook, but she forced herself to remain standing. I... <sighs> she stumbled as the pain increased. It was as if her heart was violently forcing her to move towards a certain direction. What's going on? One of the escorts asked. Is she all right? I'll... I'll be fine, Fluttershy said through grit teeth. The pain lessened when she started moving towards the direction she was being tugged towards. We need to go this way. Blue Moon nodded towards his escorts and trotted next to her. Fluttershy wanted to lean against him, even let him carry her so she could concentrate on dealing with the sharp pain. She refused. Redbrand's scolding still rang inside her head. She didn't want to keep leaning on ponies helplessly while they did their parts. They moved through one tunnel after another, with her at the lead. Halt! Stopping proved exceptionally torturous. Fluttershy's front legs buckled, and she breathed quickly and heavily. Ahead of her were several squads of legionnaires. The unicorns were on the verge of casting spells, the pegasi aimed their crossbows, and the earth ponies looked ready to charge. This place is off limits, one of the guards said. What are you all doing here? Princess's orders, one of Blue Moon's escorts said. Fluttershy could barely hold back her surprise. Even Blue Moon's eyes widened a bit at this. Which princess, and why weren't we informed in advance? The lead guard asked. Princess Celestia, this is a last-minute matter to help the element of kindness. You do recognize the bearers, don't you? The lead guard scrutinized Fluttershy carefully. Yes, we were given descriptions. He shifted his gaze towards Blue Moon. We were also given descriptions of him. Why should we allow a captured thorn in here? Princess's orders, the escort repeated. Wait here while we send a flyer to confirm, then, the guard insisted. There's no time. The element of kindness is supposed to be resting for their upcoming mission. Look at her. She's ready to fall apart. We need to get through this now. The guards hesitated. Their leader went over to Fluttershy. Are you sure you want to do this? He asked. Yes. Yes, Fluttershy replied. They parted to let her through. They continued to eye Blue Moon suspiciously until they disappeared from sight. I'm surprised, Blue Moon said to his escorts with the coast clear. You went through a great deal of trouble for us, and you will go through a lot more if it gets out that you lied. I know, the escort said. We're square after this, Thorn, and we didn't do it just for you. It really does look like the element of kindness needs this trip. You have my thanks. Regardless, Blue Moon said. Don't start getting friendly, you freakishly beautiful stallion. They crossed one more tunnel before coming upon a giant chamber, the only place in the mountain that had stonework instead of natural cavern walls. Now that they were here, the painful tugging disappeared. Fluttershy gasped at the enormous spherical crystal. That must be the Alicorn Prison, Blue Moon said. How do you know that? One of the escorts said. Can't you see the outline inside that crystal? This must be one of Oceanus' own. Princess Celestia struck down the one working for General Gravitas, and I doubt the royalty would imprison allies. You could ask me instead, mortal. A voice said. It came from the crystal and resonated across the chamber with enough power to send Fluttershy quaking. I wouldn't mind answering. Of course, I have many questions, too. I may not be able to see beyond this cage, but I still remember the unique stink of Oceanus' servants. Tell me, Lochorus, how have you survived for so long, and what do you want from me? Fluttershy winced at the mention of that name. It would seem only natural that one servant of Oceanus would recognize another, Blue Moon said. 
You're half right. I once served the firstborn, so I can tell when his enforcers are around. The Equos de Abisso have never been known for their subtlety, especially their old captain. I am Blue Moon. Despite what you may smell, this is not Loch Horus I am standing with. This is Fluttershy, bearer of the element of kindness. May we know who you are? The voice took on an amused tone. Ah, names. A long, long time ago, I was Stella Volu. During the First Rebellion, I was Regia Carnifex. When I left the Firstborn's service, I became Starswirl. Pick the name that means something to you, Blue Moon. But you are certainly the brazen one. It's not enough that you try to convince me you are not standing next to an ancient spirit made manifest by Oceanus's power of the Abyss. No, this one is actually a bearer of an element of harmony, a mortal vessel for one of the throne's greatest blessings. I have no intention of being brazen, Blue Moon said. Only of being honest. We shall see. Speak, Fluttershy. Is it true that you bear the element of kindness? Uh, uh, um, yes, sir, Starswirl, sir. May I call you Starswirl? I mean, Stella Volu and Regia Carnifex all sound nice, but I don't know what they mean, and, well, I... Fluttershy's voice trailed away. If you're Lark Horus, you've certainly put a lot of effort into your shy little filly act. You didn't hide your stink, though. Prove that you bear an element of harmony. Speak the words, and bring judgment upon yourself. The... the words? There was silence again. Disbelief crept into Starswirl's voice. Has no pony taught you the words? Fluttershy lowered her head. She didn't know what Starswirl was talking about, but she still felt ashamed for not knowing what he thought she should know. No, she said. Then speak them with me. Hold on. Blue Moon said. How can we make sure that this isn't a trick? Who knows what will happen if the element of kindness were to recite an incantation taught to her by a former servant of Oceanus? Then speak them yourself first, Blue Moon. Be her, Poison Tester. Porta cordis me aperi, lumen ab throno hemica, sto parata facitua, sit godi ot ire ignis. Blue Moon frowned and looked towards Fluttershy. He hesitated for a moment longer before repeating the words. He paused several times, during which Starswirl repeated the next words. Fluttershy braced herself for a spectacular show of magic, bright arcs of light, gathering clouds of darkness, something similar to their fight with Nightmare Moon. Nothing happened. The words do not reach where they should go, coming from you, Blue Moon. While all mortals ultimately make their way to the Eternal Herd, they do not possess a strong enough connection to make contact while they still reside in this realm. Now, if you were an Alcorn or one of the Elements of Harmony, they would cause something. What do those words mean? Blue Moon asked. Gate of my heart, open. Light from the throne, shine forth. I stand ready for your presence, be it the fire or wrath or joy. You've noticed that I've spoken the words with nothing happening. Are you ready to give it a try, element of kindness? What, what's going to happen if I say those words? Fluttershy asked. If you are not the element of kindness, then nothing. If you are Loch Horus, still nothing. If you are the element of kindness, you will invoke a presence. What that presence is will be determined by how attuned you are to your element. I, I don't know, Fluttershy said. It just seems so scary. Then we have nothing else to discuss. Starswirl did sound like he could help. From the way he spoke, it was as if he knew this La Chorus personally. Fluttershy didn't want to lose such an important opportunity. My part to play, she thought. She began to recite the words. She stumbled over some of them, sometimes badly enough for Starswirl to prompt her. But she remembered enough to get it right. Porta Cordis Mei, a parry. Lumen ab throno, amica, sto parata facci tua, sit gaudi ot irai ignis. An incredibly wonderful warmth effused Fluttershy from within. She let out a little gasp, 
then looked at Blue Moon and his escorts in embarrassment. A soft glow emanated from where her heart would be. Interesting. A limit of kindness, indeed. The wonderful feeling began to fade. The warmth increased, much to Fluttershy's panic. A few more seconds passed, and it became a very uncomfortable heat. What's... what's going... <sighs> Fluttershy cried out. In an instant, it felt as if a thousand red-hot pokers were stabbing her in the chest. Her guts felt as if she had been forced to drink lava. She fell to the ground, clutching at her chest and writhing in agony. What's happening? Blue Moon asked. His escorts called out to Starswirl in alarm. This is a bad sign. Fluttershy let out a long, agonized wail. Her insides were boiling. A burning, stinging liquid was rising from her stomach to her throat. And so our true colors emerge, element of kindness. A great gob of slime burst from Fluttershy's mouth, splattering all over the floor in front of her. When the heat started to subside, she opened her eyes, weakly, to see what had happened. By the prince, what is that horrible stench? One of the escorts asked. What you have before you is a physical manifestation of some truly dark things one puts away inside. The words have provided their diagnosis for the element of kindness's state. In front of Fluttershy was a puddle of black, still steaming ooze. The smell was a ferocious assault that left her eyes even more watery and her stomach on the verge of another protest. It smelled of buckets upon buckets of dead fish, rotting for days, mixed with salt spray, garbage, and piles of manure. She wanted to say something, ask a question, anything, but her vision began to darken and fade. Blue Moon caught Fluttershy with his magic when she collapsed. He continued to stare at the disgusting black puddle she had vomited up, even as he gently lifted her away from the mess. What happened? he whispered. He looked to the mass of crystal desperately. Tell me what happened. The worst has happened, Blue Moon. But that could mean that things are finally going to get better. Your rulers are about to fight Gravitas. I do not know what the outcome of that battle will be, but I fear that Oceanus may have already won regardless. For now, let her rest. She should recover physically in a few hours. Blue Moon nodded towards his escorts, and the group began to make their way back.